Palm Olive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. August 12th marked the end of summer school duties for the nation's teachers. Among them, our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School. Yes, August is the month when school teachers heed the siren call of travel and see such wonders as the Taj Mahal, the Eiffel Tower, and the Colosseum at Rome. Then they finish their popcorn and leave the newsreel theater. <laughs> Last Friday morning, I left my bedroom and made the long trek to the dinette, where my landlady, Mrs. Davis, greeted me with some breakfast. I hope you enjoy your orange juice better than I did mine, Connie. What was the matter with yours, Mrs. Davis? It was too hard. Guess I didn't take it out of the freezer in time. <laughs> oh. I have a brand new deep freeze, you know. It was a gift. You too? <laughs> My brother Victor sent it over. He's such a dear. But Connie, why did you have to get up so early today? Summer school's all over with, isn't it? Yes, but I've got an appointment at the hairdresser's. Mm. An appointment at the hairdresser's usually signifies a date with a certain biology teacher. Are you having lunch with Mr. Boynton, Connie? You should be a fortune teller, Mrs. Davis. Oh, that's funny. I just got in a brand new supply of tea leaves. Now you wait right here and I'll brew some. Oh, uh, not now, Mrs. Davis. Walter Denton's due any minute to give me a lift. Oh, is your car in the shop again? Yes, I dented my radiator pretty badly the other day. I got a ticket, too, for passing a car on the left. But that's not illegal, passing a car on the left. It is when the car's approaching you. <laughs> I appreciate this hitch, Walter, and it's a beautiful day for a ride. Yeah, it sure is, Miss Brooks. Uh, notice anything different about the car? The car? Why, yes, the top is down. But, Walter, this wasn't a convertible. It was a club coupe with a hard top. Sure. Well, what did you do, take the top off? I didn't have to, it fell off. <laughs> uh, twelve of us went for a ride the other night, and that's when it happened. Twelve? Walter, you shouldn't put twelve people in one car. Oh, they weren't all in the car. Six of them were on top. <laughs> that's why I caved in, I guess. I guess. <laughs> I hope no one was hurt. No, no, fortunately, there were all girls inside, and they're pretty soft. <laughs> got a little annoyed, though. She likes the car better with the top on. Oh, say, that reminds me. I promised to give Harriet a lift downtown also, Miss Brooks. Her dad left the house early this morning, and he's got their car. Uh, do you mind if we pick her up on the way? Not at all, Walter, but please make it snappy. Okay. Uh, she lives right down this block. <laughs> Is that snappy enough for you? <laughs> Great. We can pick up my head on the way back. <laughs> There's Harriet on the porch uh, with her mother. You don't have to come to the door, Walter. I'll be right there. Okay, Harriet. Uh, who's that in the car with you, Walter? Miss Brooks. Who? Miss Brooks! <laughs> That's what we teachers need, publicity. <laughs> Could you come up to the porch a minute, Miss Brooks? I'd like to talk to you about something. All right, Mrs. Conklin. Hello, Miss Brooks. Hello, Harriet. I'd like to talk to Miss Brooks alone for a minute, Harriet. Okay, Mother. I'll wait for you in the car, Miss Brooks. Well, my dear, I haven't seen you in ever so long. It has been quite a while, Mrs. Conklin, but I've been working pretty hard at school. Yes, I know. So has Mr. Conklin. He's down there now filing some reports on the summer session. That's what I wanted to talk to you about, Miss Brooks. I think a little vacation would do you a lot of good. Yes, I suppose it would. But... As you know, Mr. Conklin and I have a little summer cottage at Crystal Lake. Now, tomorrow, Saturday, is our anniversary, and I'd like to spend it up at the lake. Why don't you join us and help us celebrate... Well, I really don't know, Mrs. Conklin. You see, in a moment of weakness, I promised Mr. Boynton the entire weekend. Well, when did you do that, Miss Brooks? At lunch in about an hour from now. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I'm sure he'll accept. Uh, invite me. <laughs> so much the better. Bring Mr. Boynton along. You know, seeing how happy our married life is might give Mr. Boynton some ideas on the subject. Why, Mrs. Conklin, I don't know what you're driving at. <laughs> I've seen you look.
look at Mr. Boynton, Miss Brooks, and when one woman sees another woman look at a man the way you look at Mr. Boynton, Miss Brooks, that woman knows that the other woman is thinking thoughts about that man, that a woman has thought about a man since men and women were created. From the picture, little man, you've had a busy woman. <laughs> Oh, look, Mrs. Conklin, I am fond of Mr. Boynton, but I don't want people to think that I... Oh, well, they will anyway, so you might as well land him. (laughs) I tell you what, you and Mr. Boynton come up to Crystal Lake tomorrow and you can be our house guest over the weekend. We'll surprise Mr. Conklin. Maybe Mr. Conklin doesn't want to be surprised. (laughs) You leave Osgood to me, Miss Brooks. He'll be delighted to see you when I get through with him. I'm (laughs) sure... You know, I think Crystal Lake will be extremely conducive to romance. Mrs. Conklin, you just sold me. When I have lunch with Mr. Boynton today, I'll extend to him your very kind invitation to spend the weekend in your trap at Crystal Lake. A cottage. (laughs) Fine, but remember, Miss Brooks, don't breathe a word of this to Mr. Conklin. Don't worry about that. When Mr. Conklin's around, I hardly breathe at all. I, uh, I hope you like the idea of lunching in Marty's Malt Shop, Miss Brooks. We haven't had lunch here since summer school ended. Oh, I love to eat right across the street from school, Mr. Boynton. Of course, I feel a little like a criminal returning to the scene of the crime, but the food's quite good today. Yes, this chili is delicious. Do you always eat chili that way, with mustard and pepper and horseradish? <laughs> yes, uh, I'm afraid I have a cast-iron stomach, Miss Brooks. Really? Who helped you carry it to school? (laughs) Well, uh, I've always liked hot dishes, Miss Brooks. I think spicy things enhance a meal tremendously. That goes for life, too, doesn't it, Mr. Boynton? (laughs) What do you mean, Miss Brooks? Mr. Boynton, instead of our usual Saturday date, how would you like to get out of town for the weekend? What? Leave you all alone? I should say not. You wouldn't leave me. I'd be with you. (coughs) Oh, what a shame. You've got chili all over your tie. I'm wearing a sports shirt. I haven't got a tie. You have now. (laughs) I didn't mean to shock you, Mr. Boynton, but Mrs. Conklin's invited us up to their summer cottage at Crystal Lake because tomorrow's their anniversary and she wants us to help surprise Mr. Conklin. But why you and I, Miss Brooks? Because Mrs. Conklin's noticed how hard I've worked during the summer session, and she thought it would be fun for me. Of course, if you don't want to go, I'll tell her I can't go either. That's all right. I don't have to get any rest or relaxation. (laughs) Cool mountains. I can have just as good a time right here, just staring into a mirror and watching the melted powder run down my nose. Please, Miss Brooks, I wouldn't want to deprive you of any fun, but... Good. What time will you pick me up tomorrow? Well, all right. I'll call for you at 10 o'clock. Oh, fine. Then we can... Oh, excuse me a moment, Mr. Boynton. Mr. Conklin just sat down at that table by the window. I'd like to talk to him. I thought we were going to surprise him. Oh, I'm not going to mention our coming to Crystal Lake. I just want to sound him out about my chances of heading the English department in the coming semester. The job's open, you know. Yes, I know. Well, uh, I wish you luck, Miss Brooks. Thanks, Mr. Boynton. I'll be back in a minute. Uh, Good afternoon, Mr. Conklin. I'll have the businessman's lunch, miss, but I'll do without the soup and I can do without the potatoes. (laughs) Mr. Conklin, I'm not your waitress. It's me, Miss Brooks. I can do without you, too. (laughs) I don't want to disturb you during your lunch, Mr. Conklin, but... Good. Then I'll see you later. (laughs) I just have one brief question to ask, Mr. Conklin. May I sit down for a moment? I suppose so. Have you had your lunch? Yes, sir, with Mr. Boynton over there. Over where? Oh, oh, there, yes. Quite an attractive tie he has on. (laughs) (laughs) Miss Brooks, uh, you and Mr. Boynton see a good deal of each other, don't you? Well, now that summer school's over, we do You spend quite a bit of time together both in and out of school. People are beginning to talk. What people, Mr. Conklin? Well, members of the school board. You're still being considered as the possible new head of the English department. Oh, that's course, just what I uh, wanted don't to... Don't interrupt, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Naturally, my recommendation will carry a lot of weight with the board. But you know how I feel about fraternization among the faculty at Madison, Miss Brooks. And I... Well, it would be different if you were married or even engaged to Mr. Boynton. Then I wouldn't mind so much. Thanks, heaps. <laughs> I mean... 
how can one ever get engaged if one doesn't fraternize with one? Or more than one, if necessary, to find one. <laughs> that is your problem, Miss Brooks. Uh, my anniversary is tomorrow, and I'm going to surprise Mrs. Conklin with a little trip to Crystal Lake. We have a cottage there, you know. Yes, I know. Now, if I could feel that your conduct over the weekend was above reproach, well, I'd enjoy my vacation that much more. Believe me, Mr. Conklin, you won't be hearing a thing about Mr. Boynton and myself. <laughs> Good. Tell me, Miss Brooks, there's really nothing to your association, is there? Well, Mr. Conklin, I think I can tell you the truth. Yes, Miss Brooks? My association with Mr. Boynton is the biggest nothing you ever saw. <laughs> Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment, but first, here is Vern Smith. Doctors prove you, too, may have a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, ladies, this is not just a promise, not just a claim, but actual proof. For 36 leading skin specialists proved that a new method of cleansing with palm olive soap, using nothing but palm olive, brought new complexion beauty to two out of three women. These tests were made on 1,285 women of all ages with all types of skin, many with complexion problems. These doctors' reports showed astonishing improvements, smoother, fresher complexions, less oiliness, new softness for dry skin, fewer tiny blemishes, incipient blackheads, complexions more radiant, glowing. Here's the easy method. Just wash your face three times daily with palm olive soap each time for 60 seconds, massaging palm olive's rich, beautifying lather onto your skin like you would a cream. Then rinse. That's all. It's true. You too may have a lovelier complexion in 14 days using palm olive soap, regardless of your age, regardless of your skin type. Start your palm olive facials today. See what palm olive soap can do for your complexion in just 14 days. And for tub or shower, for loveliness all over, get new, big, thrifty, bath size palm olive. Well, Saturday morning found the Conklins on the porch of their cottage at Crystal Lake. Let's look in on them as Mr. Conklin sways gently to and fro in the porch hammock. Ah, uh, this is the life, Martha. I'm certainly glad we surprised each other with this little trip. I knew you'd enjoy yourself here, Osgood. Uh, it'll be wonderful to get away from the school for a few days. Not that I don't enjoy working with my teachers. They're a grand group of people. Cooperative, capable. But it'll be such a relief not to have to look at their long faces for a while. <laughs> Just relax, dear, and smoke your pipe. I have a little dusting to do. I think I'll take a nap. This hammock is very restful. Uh, before you go, how about a little anniversary kiss, eh? Oh, but Osgood, it's only one o'clock in the afternoon. We weren't married till three. <laughs> That's all right. Let's have a little preview. <laughs> Osgood, I declare I don't know what comes over you when we come up here. It must be the mountain air. Must be. <laughs> Come here, baby. Stop it, Oscar. Now, dear, you just drop off to sleep, and I'll wake you up in about an hour. Uh, fine, fine. <sighs> I'll get your bag out of the trunk. Don't forget the little bag and bag. Mm -hmm. There we are. I guess it's right up these porch steps, huh? You. Yeah? What is it? Who in the world do you... Miss Brooks. Mr. Boynton. What are you doing here? That's what I like about Crystal Lake, the hospitality. <laughs> oh, it's of... Oh, it's you, Miss Brooks, and Mr. Boynton. I'm so glad you could come. Martha, did you have Of an... course, dear. I asked Miss Brooks and Mr. Boynton to spend the weekend with us. That's one surprise I didn't tell you. Aren't you, Dickle? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Act like 
little tickled, Oscar? Uh, Osgood, dear, you, you certainly don't look tickled. Some people tickle easier than others. <laughs> uh, maybe Mr. Cochran would rather be alone. Oh, nonsense, Mr. Boynton. Osgood and I see as much of each other alone as we want to. We're already married, you know. <laughs> yes, I know. Congratulations on your anniversary. Oh, thank you, Mr. Boynton. I always say married life is give and take. Me too. <laughs> if you'd given me a little warning, I wouldn't have let you take me here. Quiet, dear. Now you two must be all hot and sticky from your drive up here. I hope you both have a bathing suit. For Mr. Conklin's sake, I hope we each have a bathing suit. <laughs> well, now I'll just show you where to take. Just follow me, and we'll all get ready for a nice dip. I don't want to go for a dip. <laughs> now, dear. We must do the things our guests want to do. Why? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, I'm afraid I don't have a suit with me. I forgot to pack it. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Boynton. I'll fix you up with one of Osgood's. Come along. You can nap a few more minutes, Osgood. I'll take the folks in tow. Yes, yes, do that. <laughs> Sounds like he'd like you to tow us about three miles and then sink us. <laughs> Now, you go right in here, Mr. Boynton. You'll find a bathing suit in the bottom drawer of that dress. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Conklin. Now, here's the guest room. You and my daughter, Harriet, are going to share it for the weekend. Now, before I leave you, dear, I want you to know that I planned this weekend for your sake more than anybody's. When Mr. Boynton sees how happy we are, I'm sure he'll start thinking of marriage as the jolly institution it is. Well, what do you say? Are you game? Looks like Mr. Boynton's the game, but it's worth a try. <laughs> you know, I really do like the guy, Mrs. Conklin. I know you do, my dear. Now, one more thing. In addition to our example, I think you should show your domesticity as well. So tonight, I want you to cook the dinner. Me? Definitely. What dish do you prepare best? Soup. <laughs> uh, what, uh, what kind? Campbell's. <laughs> If you'd cook something yourself, it would make a much better impression on Mr. Boynton. I know. You can barbecue some spare ribs for dinner. Now, get into your suit and I'll see you on the porch. <laughs> Isn't this fun? I, I just feel like it's a, a regular fox hunt. Tally ho! You're... <laughs> Tally ho to you, Mrs. Conklin. And I hope we don't all make a bunch of yikes out of ourselves. <laughs> Stop rocking the hammock, Martha. I'm getting seasick. <laughs> now, remember, Osgood, we've got to make a good impression for Miss Brooks' sake. I don't like it, Martha. I never did believe in this matchmaking business. Besides, I thought we'd be here alone, at least part of the time. Confound it, all this mountain air going to waste. <laughs> Don't go to waste, dear. There's always tonight. Yes. <laughs> Come here, baby. <laughs> Remember what I used to call you when we were first married? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> call me it again, Martha. All right. <laughs> Sugar cookie. Am I really your sugar cookie still? Well, your icing's a little whiter. <laughs> but you're still a sugar cookie to Mrs. Conklin, I'm sure. Miss Brooks, where did you... Hello, Miss Brooks. My, what a lovely one-piece bathing suit. Hello there. Everybody all ready? Oh, it's Mr. Fox. Uh, Mr. Fox. <laughs> Mr. Conklin's suit fits you perfectly, Mr. Boynton. Don't you think so, Miss Brooks? Yes, it's very nice, but aren't the sleeves a little wide at the wrist? <laughs> that is one of my older ones, I believe. <laughs> well, that's quite a suit you have on, Miss Brooks. She made it herself, didn't you, dear? Yes, out of an old stocking and some pen wipers. <laughs> Certainly revealing. I, I never knew you had a beauty mark there, Miss Brooks. Where? Right below your elbow there. 
Oh. Mr. Boynton, <laughs> you're staring. Isn't he a naughty Dickens? He's about as naughty as Charles Dickens. <laughs> Let's go down to the lake, shall we, Mr. Boynton? I'll race you to the raft. You're on. Let's go. Here we are. I'll help you up, Miss Brooks. Oh, thank you, Mr. Boynton. Oh. <laughs> Welcome aboard, folks. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Conklin. We didn't know you were That's out here. All right, my dear. Uh, let's let's go take a, a boat ride, Miss Brooks. Nonsense. Why should you leave the raft? Why shouldn't they? <laughs> Mr. Boynton. Yes? Last one in is a sugar cookie. Well, how do you like driving a motorboat, Miss Brooks? Oh, it's a lot of fun, Mr. Boynton, but I gla I'm glad nobody's fishing on this lake. This outboard motor's kind of noisy. Oh, I don't think it's so bad. Not so bad. If I was a fish and I heard this thing over my head, I'd go hide in a tree. Uh, I think you'd better turn around now. We're pretty far from the pier. All right. Say, that's funny. This steering wheel seems to be stuck. Oh, here, let me give you a hand. Isn't that a rowboat in that little cove we're heading for? A rowboat? Yes, it is. I'd better cut the motor off. We're heading right for them. Oh, the ignition lever is stuck, too. Oh, you've got to do something, Mr. Boynton. We're getting pretty close to that rowboat. Look out! Get out of the way! Quick, Miss Brooks, lie on the bottom of the boat. I can't stop it. Oh! What happened? Did we hit them? Oh, no, thank heaven. We, we just missed them. It, it's all right now. I've got everything under control. Oh, well, the least we can do is go back and apologize for scaring them like this. Oh, you're right, Miss Brooks. Here, I'll, I'll turn around. We're terribly sorry, folks. Oh, that's all right, Miss Brooks. <laughs> we didn't really want to catch any fish here. It's the Conklins. Don't worry about the fish, Mr. Conklin. I'm going to barbecue us all some dinner. Are you really, Miss Brooks? What are you going to barbecue? Me. <laughs> Eating out in the open air. I'm sure the spare ribs Miss Brooks barbecues will be delicious. Don't you think so, Osgood? I think I should have made them to my barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> but Mr. Boynton will enjoy them so much more because Miss Brooks did it. Won't you, Mr. Boynton? Well, yes, Harriet, I suppose Here I... they are, folks. I hope they turned out all right. Oh, I'll bet they're delicious. Might as well taste it. <laughs> <laughs> what is this, anyway? No good. Tastes like charcoal. Did you do what I told you, dear? Barbecue the ribs slowly with a nice, smooth, glowing bed of coals? Certainly I had a lovely bed of glowing coals right over the ribs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm very hungry. This mountain air sure fills you up. Maybe you ought to stop breathing a while. You don't want to make a pig of yourself. <laughs> I'm going into the house and cook myself an egg. Oh, wait, dear. I'll fix you something. You can't cook any better than she can. <laughs> Daddy, well, this is your anniversary dinner. Yes, dear. Let's be cheerful. Oh, how we danced on the night we were wed. Anniversary, my foot. I'm going inside. <laughs> we danced and we danced, but she wouldn't drop dead. <laughs> There, dear. Wasn't that a nice snack? And just the two of us alone in the kitchen. Well, it was better than those barbecued rocks. <laughs> Martha, if that poor Mr. Boynton falls for Miss Brooks, now, I think... Now, dear, we agreed to forget all about it. Let's go out and sit in the hammock together. The mountain air's still with us, you know. And it's quite dark on the porch. All right, Martha. What's it? What's it? Who's that in the hammer? It's us, Daddy. Us? Harriet and me, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Happy anniversary! <laughs> it's Walter Denton, Daddy. He 
got here while you were inside. I invited him yesterday to surprise you. This is the last straw. Now, calm down, Osgood. Remember your blood pressure. It gives him kind of a purpley look, doesn't it? <laughs> I've got to be calm. Let's go for a little stroll, Martha. Maybe we'll run into Mr. Boynton and Miss Brooks somewhere. I doubt it, Mr. Conklin. We're at the other end of the hammock. Oh! <laughs> I'll be all right. I'll be fine. Come, Martha. Let's go into our bedroom and go to sleep. Maybe when I wake up in the morning, this will all be a bed. Oh, we can't go into our bedroom together, Osgood. Now that Walter's here, Harriet and Miss Brooks and I will have to share our room. And you and Walter and Mr. Boynton will have to sleep in the guest room. What? <laughs> now this has gone far enough. I'm going to tell you people something. Uh, before you do, Mr. Conklin, I'd like to ask you a question. What is it? How are my chances of being appointed head of the English department? <laughs> you don't have to answer now. You can think it over and tell me right after I've blown my brains out. <laughs> As our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives Kay Dumas magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle aniline. Not a soap, not a liquid. Luster Cream Shampoo leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream Shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, Mrs. Conklin finally got Mr. Conklin back to a fairly neutral shade of purple. And acting on her suggestion, I steered Mr. Boynton down to the pier for a little moonlight fishing. Oh, it's wonderful fishing at night, isn't it, Mr. Boynton? Look at that moon. Yes, yeah, some fish bite much more frequently when the moon's out. Let's see, the last time I went fishing at night, I was alone. Except for McDougal, of course, my pet frog. Oh, we've had some great times together. Yes, I know you have, but now it's my turn. That is, if you don't mind, Mr. Boynton. Mind? Come here, baby. Why, Mr. Boynton. Look at the size of this baby I just landed. This trout must be about four pounds. <laughs> oh, gosh, Miss Brooks, this is my third fish. You haven't caught a thing tonight, have you? You ain't just beating your gills, frog boy. <laughs> Next week, tune into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Fun Olive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, and Vivi Janice. <laughs> From the research laboratories of the Colgate Palmolive Peat Company comes an astonishing new dentifrice, Colgate Ammoniated Tooth Powder. Contains the amazing ingredients that help prevent tooth decay and also has Colgate's exclusive foamy cleaning action plus a refreshing minty flavor the whole family will enjoy. Economical, too. The big four-ounce size costs only 43 cents. Get Colgate Ammoniated Tooth Powder now. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.